الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى دين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد uh, Tonight إن شاء الله we're going to talk about something very important which is uh, the sickness of the hearts You know as the body gets sick the heart as well gets sick and I don't mean the physical sickness of the heart, but I mean the spiritual sickness of the heart. And this is mentioned in the Quran in so many ayat, as you know. But what is the interpretation of it? How it gets sick? What reaches the heart to reach that level? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, Allah says, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا In their hearts there is sickness. And Allah increased them uh, in the sickness Three. and in another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, uh, then the person who has marad in his heart will you know has more taba, more eagerness you know to, to uh, uh, towards the women when they talk to them in a soft tone or anything like that so what gets the humans to get into the sickness of the heart we must differentiate between two uh, big things here the sickness of the heart might be caused by shubuhat or shahawat. Shubuhat is like false ideas. You might listen to a person who's talking about a false concept that's against Islam and you like what he's saying and you get fascinated by it and then you start to follow him. He will take you away. He will make you shift your own way out. Uh, uh, of the, the straight path and the right path that you are following and then you get to follow that person that's shubhat that's why we see a lot of um, a lot of people get into uh, being sectarian so many sects that are not following the, the, the Sunni Islam or the mainstream Islam why? because we follow some people who got some wrong ideas those people misguide them finally and uh, subhanallah, one of the interesting things that the ulama are saying is that how can you tell that a person has sickness in his heart when you see that person loves things that Allah does not love and he hates things that Allah Azza wa loves. When you see that person hates the true believers who follow the Quran and the Sunnah, he has hatred towards them and he loves the people who are off the track of Islam. So that person definitely is wrong. And uh, this is a criteria, that, that's a simple criteria that tells you how to judge that person. You can judge him even more and more when you go in details and discussions with him or you, you, you uh, watch his lifestyle, you can tell that. So one side is shubhat, the false ideas and the wrong ideas that people follow and, uh, and they get misguided. And uh, if you look at that, you're going to find that all those wrong sectarian people get these ideas from the non-Muslims. That's why the Prophet وسلم, in, the, in, the, in the hadith is said, You're going to follow the ways of the people who were in time before you. Shibran bi shibr. Wadhira'an bi dhira'. You know, by every measure, you're going to follow them. Even if they get into a hole of the animals who dig to get under the ground, you will just follow them to that hole and go there. The, the, the audience, the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Al-Yahud wa Nasara, do you mean the Jewish people and the Christian people? Qala faman. Then he said, who else? You see, obviously. So if you look at the people who are misguided in Islam, they are naming themselves Muslims but going to the wrong ways, you're going to find that the beliefs they follow are very similar to the beliefs of the Christian people or the Jewish people, somehow, subhanAllah. You can tell. Why? Because of the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So one side of it, of the sickness of the heart, comes because of that. And the other side of it comes from al-shahawat, the desires. That you have haram desires mainly the zina and you can name it after that you see the, the zina is one side which is one of the the, the biggest thing that uh, the people uh, or one of the major sins that people fall in and you have also 
for example, the desire or the, the lust for getting the money, even if it's from haram, that's another thing. You can name it. But on the top of it comes the zina. That's why the Quran says, The person who will get attracted to the women the most uh, is the one who has sickness in his heart. By the way, we must know that the scholars also talked about two levels. There are some people who have sickness in the heart, okay, but they're still inside Islam. And some people who have dead hearts, they reach it to a level that the heart became dead, meaning their hearts do not respond to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this way, they became equal to the kuffar and the, the, the munafiqi. So the hearts are dead totally. These are the hearts of the kuffar and the munafiqi. Dead. No matter what you say to him. Allah Azza wa said to the Prophet Sallallahu in the Quran, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَسْتَمِعُ إِلَيْكِ You're gonna find some of them are listening to you. But they cannot uh, benefit from anything from, uh, from what they hear. أَفَأَنْتَ تُسْمِعُ الصُّمَّةِ You think uh, that you're gonna make the people who are deaf listen to you. They're not deaf literally, but they're deaf in the, the sense that the words they listen does not come through their hearts and don't benefit. Like some of them are looking to you. Are you going to be guiding the, the people who are blind, even though they don't see it? So seeing here is not the, the, the eyesight, it is the heart sight. The insight that is inside your heart and inside your soul. So we have to be careful about that. When you listen to the Quran, and the Quran is telling you about something and you don't feel like you insist to go against this ayah, then you must be alarmed that you have a problem with your heart. Your heart is not receiving it. You know, the receiver is not good. You have to fix it. Yeah, this is the receiver that receives the guidance. Allah Azza wa Jal, every time he talks about the guidance, he talks about the hearts. It's from here. So if you have a problem with that, then you have a big problem. However, if your heart is sick, you're still okay. I'm not going to say okay, okay, but you still have a chance to fix it. Because when, if you, even if you have a physical sickness, there is a chance to go to the doctor, take some medicine, and then it's fixed, right? Same thing for the heart. If the heart's sick, still you have a chance to fix it. Because even when the Prophet وسلم, is talking about the, the, the signs of the hypocrites, He's, he talked about that they lie all the time when they talk, that they're not trustworthy, they always uh, betray you. And when they, when they give you a covenant, they break their covenant. So, uh, if a Muslim has one of these things, will we consider him a total hypocrite monafiq? No. But he has one of the attributes or the qualities of the munafiqi. But he's still a believer. He's still a believer. Uh, let me give you an example, and this example is very astonishing and very surprising when you listen to it from the first time. We know the story, but when you think about it in this way, in the time when there is an argument between Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, the companion of Rasulullah and Bilal, the companion of Rasulullah they have a tough argument, so Abu Dhar said to him, Yabna al-Sawda, oh the son of a black woman. Abu Dhar is a believer, true believer. Bilal is a true believer. Then they came to the Prophet and they bring the issue to him. The Prophet went mad against Abu Dhar for what he said. And he said one word to him. You are a man who still has qualities of the ignorance time, the time before Islam. Like you still have bad qualities. Even though he's a true believer and a strong believer. But does, that doesn't, that means he has a defect in his heart. He still has a problem with his heart. But it doesn't make him a hypocrite. So we might have some of the attributes of jahiliya inside us. We might have some issues and some problems that we have to work on. But that doesn't get you outside Islam. As long as you're fixing your own mistakes and working on that. But when you ignore that sickness in your, in your heart, you might reach to the level that Allah Azza wa talked about the kuffar and the munafiqeen. وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُوا On their hearts there are locks and shields. Their hearts are like sealed inside a shell or inside anything. So that blocks the signal from coming inside. Imagine 
they reach it to a level that there is a lot over their hearts so the hearts do not receive any uh, guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the thing you should be afraid of because every time you have some sickness or disease in the heart and you ignore it ignore it ignore it you will might reach to the level that the heart is not receiving any guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is very very alarming thing and very uh, bad thing actually how to fix our hearts by following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by loving what Allah Azza wa Jal loves because this is very important it's all about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because a lot of people at the time of Rasulullah claimed and this is a claim it has to be supported any word we say it's a claim unless your actions support what you say you say I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nobody loves Allah as much as I love Allah and then in the time of Jum'ah, you're staying home, praying at home. You don't come to the masjid. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to believe you. I love Allah the most. And then in Ramadan, you are eating in the daytime. And you have no problem at all. You're not sick or traveling or anything. So nobody's going to believe what you say. You must have proof to that. Your actions and your own deeds must support what you say. So at the time of the Prophet, a lot of people started to say, Oh, we love Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an ayah to be a criteria. This is a scale that is going to tell who loves Allah and who doesn't love Allah. Allah Azza wa says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ الله. Say to them, if you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then follow me. Follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, so this is the, the proof. If you love Allah, you follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you follow the guidance of the Prophet. Okay, and you will have something written. What is it? Then Allah Azza wa will love you in return and He will forgive your own sins. See, that's a mutual thing between you, Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You love Allah, Allah is going to love you back. You follow the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, sallam, Allah will love you and He will forgive your own sins. By the way, the scholars talk a lot about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how important it is to the belief. It's all the belief is built on the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the right way. Because some people love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but in the wrong way. Can somebody love Allah in the wrong way? Yes. Yes. How? For example, the scholars gave example of some people who say that they love Allah, but they offer stuff in Islam that is not the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa For example, you see the Sufi people come in the masajid and keep making dhikr and dancing and singing together and say we express our love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not the right way to express your love. Yes, you love Allah like any other Muslim, but the way you do it now, you took a shift away from what the Prophet and the Sahaba and the early generations of Islam did. You are taking a shift. And then they say, because Allah is beautiful, we love every creature that has a beauty. So you're going to find them looking at the beautiful women, the beautiful children and the beautiful everything, you know, while Allah Azza wa told them to lower their gaze and not to look at the women or, you know, you see. So they took it to a different, different level. You see, why? Because the shaitan came to them from this love of Allah and he tricked them. He took them too far from that. You see, so we have to be careful. The scholars wrote a lot about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This whole book is talking about these concepts, the whole book. And this is just, you know, one author writing about that. Imagine, you know, if you keep talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his love and, uh, and how uh, shall we uh, worship Allah Azza wa in the way he loves, then the talking will keep going on. So it's actually something built on each other. You see, you're building up your Iman by the way you do it in the way the Quran wants you to do it, in the way the Prophet Muhammad was doing it. That's the right path and this is the right way. So inshallah Azza wa Jal, we'll talk more about that in the in the coming times. Jazakumullah khairan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam.